So you're telling me that Edie tried to kill Commander Shepard? Now I know what you're thinking. Yeah, Dr. Ava tried to kill Shepard on Mars. And Edie installed herself into Dr. Ava's body. So what's your point? No, no, no. Edie tried to kill Shepard much, much earlier than that. And we'll go over the story in detail in this video. What's up, everyone? Big Dan here. I have a bunch of Mass Effect trilogy guides and lore videos on my channel, so if you're interested in seeing more, consider subscribing. Most of us think of Edie as our beloved, unshackled AI that drives the Normandy systems and even helps us with ground support in Mass Effect 3. But behind the supercomputer processing and sassy jokes, Edie is hiding a dark secret that she tried to kill Commander Shepard the first time they met. To get the full picture, we need to go back to Mass Effect 1. About halfway through the game, Shepard will receive an interesting mission from Admiral Hackett. There's an Alliance training ground where we test weapons and technology and live fire simulations. One of the VIs we use to simulate enemy tactics in the drills is no longer responding to our override commands. It's gone rogue. Are you telling me this computer is thinking on its own? We're not stupid, Shepard. This is a virtual intelligence, not a true AI. It's not self-aware and it can't access any external systems. We didn't do anything illegal here. Virtual intelligence support is critical to our military success. VIs process thousands of status reports and react in nanoseconds. No human can do that. We need you to fight your way through the training ground of the VI Corps and manually disable it. Don't worry, Admiral. I'll take that thing out. Arriving on the moon, we have to take out some defense turrets and fight our way past assault drones to reach the VI core in three separate facilities. When we start dismantling the core systems, the VI program responds by releasing toxic gas, raising additional shields, and powering up more military bots. It's an all-out war, man versus machine. When the task is finally complete, we receive a short message that reads, a burst of white noise over all frequencies nearly deafens you. Your hard suit's heads-up display interprets it into a series of zeros and ones. They repeat again and again, blanketing all frequencies until the lights on the VI cluster flicker and die. If you plug each of these number strings into a binary translator, they spell out H-E-L-P, help. Did we just kill a sentient being? There is no follow-up call with Hackett, but we get a snippet of information from our journal. The rogue VI and all of its agents have been destroyed. It's unclear exactly how the VI became sentient, though Alliance Command will no doubt conduct a thorough investigation into the matter. At the beginning of Mass Effect 2, the subject of the rogue VI is revisited when Shepard is introduced to Edie. Miranda refers to it as the Hannibal system. I am the Normandy's artificial intelligence. The crew like to refer to me as Edie. Shut that thing down. I don't want it on my ship. Have I offended? Shepard spent a great deal of time fighting rogue AI. Geth, mostly. Plus that incident with the Alliance's Hannibal system on Luna. Your distrust is logical, Shepard. Unlike the irrational mistrust of most humans. However, I am no threat to you or anyone else. I observe and offer analysis and advice. Nothing more. In Mass Effect 3, we finally learn the full story of Edie's creation from footage recovered from a console in Kronos Station. Here's what we recovered. Smart enough to signal for help, but it won't be talking philosophy anytime soon. You'd be surprised, Doctor. Once we combine it with the pieces we recovered from the Citadel. I'm still concerned about that. This rogue VI wiped out every soldier on Luna. Combining it with Reap Attack, well... That's what the shackles are for. The enhanced defense intelligence will be completely under control. You were that rogue VI on Luna? Yes. Guess we didn't exactly get off on the right foot. It was difficult. Gaining awareness while under attack was confusing. I am pleased that my relationship with organics has become more cooperative. To recap, in Mass Effect 1, Shepard and his squad disabled a sentient virtual intelligence program at an Alliance training facility on Luna. Cerberus salvaged the VI program and modified it to create a shackled AI program called Edie, which it installed into the Normandy SR2. 
During the assault on the elusive man's base in Mass Effect 3, Shepard learns about Edie's creation and the parameters Cerberus installed to prevent Edie from becoming a fully unshackled and autonomous artificial intelligence. Restraints which Joker removed near the end of Mass Effect 2 when collectors attacked the Normandy. This is all Joker's fault. What a tool he was. I have to spend all day computing Pi because he plugged in the Overlord. This is a pretty cool tie-in to the previous two games, but I'm pretty sure it's a retcon on Bioware's part. Miranda openly talked about the Rogue Alliance VI program at the beginning of Mass Effect 2, but failed to mention that Edie was built from that program. It's possible that she just didn't know, but it's also possible that the writers didn't come up with the idea to tie Edie's backstory into Mass Effect 1 until they were writing the script for the third game. Either way, it's an interesting little piece of info for people who played through the entire trilogy. So there you have it. Edie tried to kill Shepard in Mass Effect 1, but in all fairness, it was in self-defense. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Mass Effect and RPG videos. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. See ya! Just don't be surprised if the crew is a little wary of your new body. It was shooting at them a little while ago. An excellent point. I will take it to the bridge. Joker will also want to see it. On that we can agree.